Hey everybody, just wanted to send out yet another uh, quick tutorial on some um, software that we use on Sunday mornings here at Northside. Uh, today we're looking at the uh, ATEM uh, 4K switcher software. Um, so you guys will uh, come in Sunday morning um, and turn on the machine to run this software and you'll come over here to this left side here and open this icon, uh, ATEM Software Control. Uh, so you'll click on that, the software will boot up. Now mind you, the switcher ha has to be on in order for the software to open. Uh, otherwise, you, you'll click on the icon and it'll just say, cannot find a uh, device. Uh, so make sure that the switcher is on and ready to go. Uh, once you've done that, you'll see this menu come up. Um, and you also will see on your side screen, uh, the preview screen, which has all of our inputs, outputs. Uh, they're available for you to view and reference as you're running the switcher on uh, during a service. Um, but on the software side, uh, I want to just point out a few things uh, to you guys before we get dive into the details here. Um, you might notice, uh, especially uh, if, you, if we have a power surge, which occasionally happens around here on campus, uh, that sometimes the settings aren't um, are the way that they usually are. Uh, if that ever happens, uh, go up here to the top uh, left and click on File. Uh, and you'll see some options here. At the very top, you'll see a button called Restore. Uh, what this does is the software makes a save date. Uh, basically, we can save all the settings and save it to a time and date, uh, and then we can recall it later. So at this time, we've got um, a date saved at February 12th of this year that you can bring up and open, and so then you'll click on that. Uh, and it'll come up with this menu, and just basically it's just asking, okay, what all do you want to recall? Uh, uh, and mainly you want to just make sure that everything is checked that is available to be checked. You, you'll see that some of these are grayed out, so you can't select them. But just make sure that everything's checked, ready to go, and you'll hit restore. Uh, once you've done that, it will then bring all the settings back uh, the way they should be, and you guys will be able to run uh, for that Sunday, no problems. Um, so first off, as uh, after we've done that, then we can kind of get into running the uh, software. You guys will already notice that you have a column here for your live uh, program section. You have a column here below for the preview section. Um, so that's you can use that um, back and forth uh, to get ready to make a call or, or to, to show a camera or a slide. Uh, you can use the preview for exactly what it's called, a preview. Uh, so say you, you want to get ready to view a camera or view a slide, but you're not ready to go live with it yet. So you'll select that under the preview window, and it'll come up uh, there in the preview section um, on, the, on the screen. Um, but also, uh, so, then, so same thing here. If you're ready to go live, you can then just do hard cuts, what they like to call, um, to that selection there. So that's what the difference is there on those two columns. Um, you also have selections here for different um, uh, color selections, so like bars, black. Um, we don't use that often in the service, so don't worry about those too much. Um, the next couple things to look at here are these columns here. Uh, so here's your transition style. Uh, we primarily use mix um, here at Northside, uh, so you know. Don't really need to, to use any of these at this point. Just use the mix for our, our transition style. Uh, the other button to, that you use a lot is this auto button. What that does is just it'll, it'll automatically use that transition and put the time rate that you've put in here and cut to back and forth diff to different sources. So what you'll do is you'll go over here and set your preview. Say we're running a, a sermon slide here live right here on the program but I know I need to go to camera three here pretty pretty soon. So I've already set that in my preview and I'll go over here to auto uh, under the transition and I'll click auto and you'll see, okay, so after the transition, now the cam three went to live and then it went to uh, pro presenter and the program menu. So you'll see how that kind of kind of goes back and forth. So make your selections in the preview, hit uh, auto to go live and then it'll make those selections there. Uh, so that's how the transition uh, style one runs. Uh, the next column or box right here are the next transitions. Um, you'll have different key selections here, and these are called upstream keys. Uh, and you'll have also what are called downstream keys. So let's talk about upstream keys first. Um, so these are really cool. They have different selections and different options available to what you can do with them. 
Uh, right now we are only using two. We're using upstream key one and upstream key two. As you can see, I'm selecting them here on the far right uh, and it gives you the options of what's set. Uh, since we are using a uh, already pre-made um, uh, setting or a save setting, you shouldn't need to mess with any of the settings here. Um, but just so you guys know, we really are only using one and two. Uh, one we use for our kid calls. Um, so say if a you know, parent has a crying child in the nursery area, uh, we'll get that number from them. And then we'll punch that number in a pro presenter. This key basically just says, hey, I, I want to allow... Um, the number coming from ProPresenter to show up on the top uh, corner of, of the screen. So you'll select key one, hit on air, and then that number will pop up as available, um, allowing the parent to know uh, that their child is needing to be uh, picked up. Uh, the next uh, upstream key is upstream key two. Uh, we use this one primarily for uh, lower thirds during worship. Um, so as you guys uh, are running cameras live, say we'll, so we already have camera three up on the screens, uh, but we want to run lyrics over top of each uh, camera shot. That is under the upstream key two. So you'll have uh, the key two uh, highlighted and you'll have it on air. And so what that'll do is that'll put over overlay the lyrics for the songs that we're singing over top of the camera shot. Um, so that's what that one does. So key two on air. Um, that's what we need there for there. Uh, the next is uh, downstream keys. So uh, again, similar um, similar things that we can do, just kind of overlays of an existing screen or existing shot. Uh, right now, downstream key one is coming off of a media player. So the media player, the software is really cool. It has a uh, built-in media player that we can use to select. Um, so that's what we're using there for the downstream key one. And the downstream key two we use for lowering thirds, lower thirds during the sermon. Um, oftentimes, uh, we need a little bit darker overlay underneath uh, or behind the the words or the slides that the, our pastors would be uh, needing to reference to. So it needs to be a little bit different from, than the upstream key too. So just it's a it's just a lower third background um, with a little bit of a black, so it's it's easy to to read. Um, so that's the differences in those keys. But let me show you how to set uh, the media for those. Um, and this you will have to do each Sunday morning as you guys come in and get set up for the, for the services. So you'll come in, uh, load your settings uh, from the save setting, and then go to the media. You can see down here at the bottom, uh, right here, go to media, and they'll bring up a whole new window. Uh, you'll see a lot of slots available for different um, things we can plug in. Uh, over here on the far left is where you'll find a lot of your source files. We have already um, put all of our title lower thirds for all of our ministers and pastor um, here under favorites. So you'll just go over here to the star, click on favorites, go to title lower thirds, and you'll see this whole menu drop down of all of our uh, available uh, lower third titles. Um, and so you'll look at your worship order and select the ones, you know, the ministers or pastors that are going to be speaking that day. And you'll just grab them and drag them over to the selected or desired um bank in your media slot. Um, so for instance, I just grabbed Brandon uh, in slot one. We'll put David in slot two uh, just for fun. And so we're ready to go with our media. So you'll, after you've set that, and you guys will see also over here, let me say this real quick, uh, it also gives you a nice little preview window here on the sides of, okay, you, you've set David in slot one and Brandon in slot two, um, just so for your reference. And so we can go back over here to uh, the switcher switcher preview and we can come in here and test uh, what we've set so I've set David in slot one remember and so I've gone on air and what that what that does is it sets uh, David's lower third to be over top uh, the screen there so you'll see um, so we'll go off air is it'll, it'll take it off so on air off air you can also use the auto which kind of brings it uh, on and up uh, in a nice transition I prefer that. It just looks a lot smoother, a lot cleaner. So use the auto cut there um, as well. And that's really easy for this one because the auto button is directly under uh, the button for the downstream key. You'll see right here. So we'll click auto. It'll just kind of bring that in a nice smooth transition again to bring it off. Um, so, but since we're only using one downstream key for two names, 
uh, you will actually need to come in here and select your media player one to the next name that you need. So uh, I already I already had and pulled Brandon out there, so we'll just grab Brandon and still shot one. So now when I hit auto, it'll be Brandon's name rather than David's. So just be aware of that. Whatever you put in media player one will be the lower third that you're trying to um, activate in downstream key one. Um, downstream key two, as I said, is our uh, lower thirds during the sermon. Again, you shouldn't need to mess with any of the settings since you're uh, bringing the save settings from, from the beginning. Um, so what that'll do is that'll just activate uh, the window to allow ProPresenter uh, slides to run underneath um, over to, or over top, sorry, the, the camera shot. And that'll look like something like this. So you'll see um, we'll have a phrase or maybe a, a scripture reference that the teaching pastor wants to reference. And so that'll allow that to, to be selected there at the bottom. And you'll see, you probably can't see in the video, but it slightly uh, darkens the bottom um, third of the screen. So it just makes those white uh, letters pop a little bit better than if it was just over top the video. So that's the difference in the downstream uh, lower third and the upstream lower third, what we use. So that is pretty much everything that we'll uh, use on a Sunday morning. The last few things that I would uh, just run through with you guys is uh, the switcher software does also have an audio mixer. Um, so this is where we can see incoming audio feed from ProPresenter, our different cameras, and any other input we might have plugged in. Um, you see uh, right now I'm getting some audio from, from camera three because that's the only one I have turned on. Uh, but we, I mean, right now we don't use this for anything. Um, but we do have audio being uh, poured into uh, the switcher and that comes through this input here. So on occasion, sometimes we have, if we have to make tweaks, uh, it can overdrive the channel. And so you might occasionally take a look at the audio and make sure it's just not distorting if it's not going into the red because um, we don't want that. Because that's when we go to record, which I'll show you guys in a second, when we go to record, then it'll make the audio all distorted and, and just won't sound good at all. Um, so just be you know, periodically checking that um, from time to time as you guys run the switcher. Uh, so that brings us over to the capture. So not only does it have all these features uh, with different keys and different transitions, we also, also can capture uh, a, a service right here off the switcher software. So what you'll do is you'll go over here and click uh, capture. Um, it'll bring up this little window here. Uh, you'll click on the lock button. And so that'll allow it to be ready to be, to be queued to record. Um, I would suggest that you open up the capture setup and then I'll bring up this little window and right here in capture file 2 uh, just change the title of the service so we have just did uh, you know February 19th was last Sunday so then I would come in here to get ready for this coming Sunday February uh, from the 19th to the 26th and I'll probably list if it, if it was first service or second service or third service or whatever we're, whatever we're wanting to capture and I would give it that name so that I, can, I know I can go back and refer to it later. So then I would hit select and then we're ready to go. And then uh, once I'm ready to record, I just hit the record button and it'll take off and you'll see it's starting to track. Um, there have been a very few occasions where you'll see dropped frame notification. If you see that, just let it run. Uh, it's still recording. It just might have dropped a few frames. Um, don't ever stop recording. If it's still going, don't ever stop because then that there's really not much we can fix if if the recording has been stopped. Um, so just keep on recording. Now, if it's if it records and crashes, uh, obviously then it, it'll stop recording and just reopen the software and then run from there. Um, but uh, shouldn't need to do anything more than that. So that is the capture and that is how we record. Um, one last thing is the uh, auxes. So we have the ATEM uh, 4K. Uh, with that, also gives us a few options for auxiliary outputs. So right now, um, we are using two of the three. Uh, right here, you'll see at the top of the screen, you'll see, you see the file, the macros, backstage, quarry feed, and the auxiliary three, which is blank because we're not using it for anything right now. Um, but aux one. Uh, we already had labeled as backstage. So this feeds video uh, footage and everything to backstage uh, for the rest of the team that's back there. 
And so uh, again, this will be this will be part of the save settings. But if anything were to change, this is how it should be set. So you'll click on backstage and make sure it's set to program. You'll see a little dot over here to the left indicating that's what it's set to. So backstage program is what we need it to. Uh, also, anytime that we need um, feed to another room, uh, you can also just label that. Right now we have a feed to the quarry, even though we don't use it very much. Um, also, we have that set to program. So it's really cool. You, we can set different auxes off of that to be um, different outputs if we wanted to, or we can just set it to program as just another regular output. So pretty cool features there as well. So I think that's about it for this tutorial. If you guys have any further questions, feel free to email me or, or uh, just uh, catch me on a Sunday, ask me any questions you might have. Love to help out. And thanks for watching, and uh, hope it was helpful, and we'll catch you later. Thanks.